Hello everyone, I'm Claire Huddleston. Thanks for joining us tonight. Sumter and Marengo County residents are still picking up the pieces from April 15th tornado outbreak. Now they're getting hit by the Federal Emergency Management Agency. WVA's Matt McCoy has the story from Geiger. When each every individual walks out the house the next morning, they look around and say, I need to move this, I need to move that, but a lot of them don't know where to start because it's so much debris and stuff that's just there, and they really don't have the heart, you know, to, to why they get started. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's the feeling around the small town of Geiger. After FEMA announced Friday, neither Sumner nor Marengo County would see any federal assistance to help with cleanup costs. They come to me, you know, I told them, you know, I only can do what I can do, you know, at least I can bring them here and let them look at it, I can talk to them, but basically they are really hurt about it. Early Moore has lived in Geiger his entire life. While his home escaped the tornado with just minor damages, as he looks around his town, his faith in FEMA and the government crumbles. You already see the, the uh, devastation and the destruction and everything else. If you can't do nothing about this, then what, what's the purpose of having FEMA? We pay taxes just like everybody else. And, and uh, if the government can't help us simply because we are a small community and everything else, uh, why help the one that's, that's got plenty? As residents sift through the rubble, Mayor Michael Cunningham says the city has a backup plan if FEMA's denial stands. So we just had to try to manage what we got. If we just go in the hole, we just had to quit cleaning up right there and uh, hope we can get some funds somewhere else and then we can start back off. We're going to apply for several grants. You know, they are out there and like we got grant writers, you know what I'm saying? They just waiting, you know, to see what the outcome going to be. Governor Robert Bentley now has 30 days to decide if he wants to appeal FEMA's decision or not. Until then, the residents of Geiger tell me they're going to rebuild their community one building at a time together. Reporting in Geiger in Sumter County, Matt McCoy, WVUA News. Officials with FEMA told WVUA tonight Sumter and Marengo counties were denied assistance because the damage was not beyond the capability of the state and local governments. FEMA says if they get an appeal from Governor Bentley, they will take a second look at the case and act as quickly as they can. It's time for a first look at Alabama's home team forecast. Here's Chief Meteorologist Richard Scott. Hey Claire, good Monday evening to you. We've been watching a horrific tornado outbreak and severe weather outbreak happening over parts of Arkansas, Tennessee and Texas today. Numerous homes damaged and destroyed and also some injuries back in Arkansas. That's a storm system that's going to bring some chance of severe weather tomorrow. Now the chance of severe weather tomorrow on the low side. We're not talking a major outbreak around here, but starting as early as 5 in the morning, lasting until about 7 o'clock for large hail damaging winds, isolated tornado or two for our northwestern counties, more of our central counties along Interstate 25 59 between 11 in the morning and 9 o'clock tomorrow evening. But on Wednesday, a much more serious severe weather threat could have a severe weather outbreak on Wednesday. The highest threat across West Alabama. What about the rest of the forecast? Home team weather is coming up. Stay with us. Thanks, Richard. Brookwood Mayor Alton Heitch addressed the Tuscaloosa County School Board tonight. Mayor Heitch urged the school board to make sure there is an auditorium in the new Brookwood High School. Heitch says it would be beneficial to the community to have that space. Walter Energy was originally giving the school system 90 acres of land for free. They've reduced that amount to 75 acres. Contractors are working with the new measurements and they may have to cut the original plans that included an auditorium. However, Superintendent Dr. Frank Costanzo says it all comes down to the budget. Budget number for the high school was $30 million. That's what the board approved. And so everything has to fit within the $30 million. The land, the roads, the utilities, the building, everything has to be a part of that. And so what we're trying to do is, is it possible to include an auditorium and still be within budget? Costanzo says he agrees with Mayor Heitch and would like to see the new Brookwood High School with an auditorium if the budget allows. The Tuscaloosa County School Board has announced it will have to cut $3 million from next year's budget, and some of the cuts will likely be to special education. WVA's Raquel Walker shows us how this could impact some Tuscaloosa families. The Target program at the Sprayberry Education Center is just one program that could be on the chopping block for education funding cuts in the Tuscaloosa County school system next year. This news doesn't sit well with Angie Askew, who has a child in the Target program. And they're saying it's going to save in the neighborhood of $91,000 in transportation costs, which I've showed 15 times over that that's not truly the case. However, having that said, I've offered to write the county school board a check for $91,000 out of my personal funds 
to cover it. Superintendent Dr. Freak Costanzo says special education programs may be hit hard, but it's all about financial balance and what's best for the school system. And unfortunately, it gets into can you continue to offer the same services that you have, that you've been able to do, with less money? And the answer is no, we cannot do that. And so we have to go in and look at everything we have that, that's, uh, uh, that's out there. And the, the, the sad thing is it's, it's a service. Uh, there are a number of services that we may not be able to provide, but no decision has been made. In order to balance the budget, the county will have to cut about 50 teachers and 50 staff members. But Askew believes six traveling special education teachers is not enough for the 18 county schools. Well, I'm looking to take a second mortgage on my home. I'm that passionate and that strongly opposed to having it moved back into the home schools because I believe it would be a disservice not only to the gifted children but to all the children in Tuscaloosa County. I understand we're under a financial crunch and that the economy is the, what it is right now. However, I just feel like they're looking to cut special needs programs. It's not the best possible place to make those cuts at this time. It's already a grossly underfunded program. Casanzo says no decisions have been made yet. In Tuscaloosa, Raquel Walker, WVUA News. Askew says if funding cuts are made to special education, her next step is to take the issue to Montgomery. Controversy surrounding the future of the Westervelt Warner Museum in Tuscaloosa could mean big changes are on the way for the museum. According to the Westervelt Warner Museum's executive director, Dr. Susan Austin Warner, 84 pieces of artwork have been sold by the Westervelt company. Warner told WVUA the museum originally held around 700 pieces of artwork collected by Jack Warner. Susan Warner says the museum will close in less than 60 days. She says the collection is part of Jack Warner's legacy, and that's what makes selling the pieces so difficult. Jack Warner, my husband, has just been really um, so disappointed and somewhat devastated that, you know, the collection that he's worked on for 50 years that um, tells the story not only of what made America great, but what made his company great. Warner says they're searching for another place in the North River area to house the remaining artwork. Firefighters, firefighters battle the flames when a fire breaks out, and now they're battling it out to be the best. The Firefighter Combat Challenge is considered to be the toughest two minutes in sports. You can catch all the action live this weekend in Tuscaloosa. The challenge simulates the skills it takes to be a firefighter. Tuscaloosa has had teams represent the Tuscaloosa Fire and Rescue Service in several competitions. Officials say they're busy getting ready for this weekend's big competition. A lot of our guys are are not just trying to get to the two-minute barrier, but are under it now and are trying to really push past the, the minute 50 barrier now and, and get lower and lower, um, again, to try to, to win those regional competitions and, and prepare ourselves to go compete at the Worlds on a, on a really high level against guys from all over the world. The Firefighter Combat Challenge is sponsored by the City of Tuscaloosa and the Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports Commission. It's this weekend in the Downtown City Fest lot. For more information about the Firefighter Combat Challenge, just go to our website, WVUATV.com, and click Numbers and Links. Children's games and laughter weren't the only thing filling West Alabama skies this evening. The third annual Sky Lantern Festival took over Sokol Park. The event is sponsored by Tuscaloosa's Child Abuse Prevention Services, or CAPS. Each lantern celebrates the life of a child and tries to lighten up a serious subject. LaShonda Hayes says it's important to educate the community about child abuse. We're trying to raise awareness about child abuse, and we're also trying to educate the community on how to prevent child abuse. We, um, we try to work with kids to educate them on how, you know, how not to be victims of child abuse. We also try to work with parents to help reduce the risk that they'll abuse their children. An anonymous donor gave CAPS $500 to buy 50 lanterns so every child could light a lantern tonight. According to Mental Health America, 9% of U.S. college students seriously think about suicide at some point during school. That's 1.26 million students. One University of Alabama organization is now doing something to fight this problem. WVA's Amanda Killen explains in this week's Capstone Correspondent Report. Hi, I'm Capstone Correspondent Amanda Killen, a senior majoring in Broadcast News. University of Alabama organization Sustained Dialogue is advocating a voice for students who are struggling with mental disorders. 
People were invited to the Mental Health Monologues event, where anonymous essays were collected from students on campus about their personal struggles with mental illness. In an hour-long performance, actors portrayed students' experiences through emotional monologues. The group's objective is to transform mental health into a topic of dialogue on campus and erase the stigma surrounding discussion and treatment of mental illness, as well as challenging the negative stereotypes. Sustained Dialogue moderator Cole Moten says that with the stress of school and work, people should pay attention to their mental health just as much as their physical health. Not enough people address the fact that mental health needs to be as healthy as your physical health. Um, you know, you can eat right, but you also need to, you know, you can seek advice or seek a counselor because as a student, we come through a lot of stress. The group encourages students to seek advice from the counseling center or get help from the Tuscaloosa chapter of the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill which you can visit by going to www.nami.org. If you'd like to see the University of Alabama through the eyes of a student, go to wvuatv.com. I'm Capstone correspondent Amanda Killen for WVUA News.